did did Diddy stay in touch with you as a mentor afterwards or even now? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, he didn't. Uh, that's the only thing I didn't like about it because you know he was um he he seemed like he treated me good at, uh, while I was at the at the you know the music company um because uh, like you said they tread lightly when you're there as a child. Right. You know my dad. <laughs> You know, you, you don't you don't mess with somebody's child. That's all I'm gonna say. You know, he no, wanted to me. He's from the projects. We live in the middle class right now. But. Hey, did you ever wonder what went down with that kid Jerome, the one who used to be with Diddy as a recording artist? Seems like if you roll with Diddy, your chances of making it out alive or making it at all are pretty slim. Just look at the other artists he's messed with in the recording biz. So, like way back when Bad Boy Records dropped their first album, Notorious Big's Ready to Die and it was a massive hit. That put them on the map. Around that time, they signed Lil Jerome, this R&B kid from Akron, Ohio. He dropped his first single, Too Old For Me, which also happened to be the lead single for Bad Boy's Greatest Hits Volume 1. They even remixed the song a couple of times, throwing in an R&B version and a Shorty and Nori remix, featuring the rapper Nor with Diddy doing the ad-libs. Lil Jerome also showed up on the Belly soundtrack with a remake of Stevie Wonder's I Never Dreamed You'd Leave in Summer. After that, though, he just vanished into thin air. Back in the day, Lil Jerome spilled the beans in an interview with Bad Boy Dog. When they asked if leaving the label was his call, he said it was a mix of growing pains and the crazy pressure of the music biz. He had a nervous breakdown, and Puffy thought it was best to cut ties. It wasn't really his choice. According to Jerome, he had about 13 songs ready for an album before the breakdown. But here's the kicker. When he hit puberty, his voice went haywire. It wasn't the usual voice change. Something went wrong. He was also dealing with reflux disease, and there were times when he couldn't hit a note to save his life. The whole situation drove him and the label nuts. Years later, he stuck to the same story when asked why he got the boot. Jerome spilled more details, saying puberty hit him hard emotionally. You know how that goes, right? Hormones messing everything up. Right when he was gearing up to drop his album, it was like a whirlwind studio time, photo shoots, back-to-back -back madness. The pressure and growing pains got to him, and bam, he had a breakdown. But guess what? Diddy didn't give a damn. There's this story from a friend of someone on the set of Lil Jerome's Dear Yvette music video. Allegedly, Jerome went into his trailer for a quick second and never came back out. Word was, he had a full-on panic attack. Dude was all dressed up, makeup on, camera ready, and his family was there. But his mom kept saying he couldn't come out because of the panic attack. Everyone on set waited for hours. Dancers and extras filmed around Coney Island. But Jerome didn't even shoot one scene. The rumor was that Diddy just said, forget it, and dropped the whole project right there. Now why didn't Diddy put in more effort, you ask? Well, truth is, once Jerome got sick, and it wasn't even his fault, Diddy didn't see dollar signs anymore. Dude wasted no time dropping him. If Diddy really cared about Lil Jerome, he would have taken a sec to make sure he was in the right headspace for more music instead of just kicking him to the curb. So, get this. Supposedly, Jerome tried reaching out to others on the label, but they all ghosted him. As for his life post bad boy, Lil Jerome went on to get a degree in international business, snagged a master's in marketing, and learned French, German, Spanish, Italian, and a bit of Chinese. Dude just moved on, and good for him. Maybe Diddy rejecting him turned out to be his saving grace. It ain't all sunshine for other former artists, though. Take Carl Thomas, for example. He left Bad Boy Records because when his brother died, Diddy called him a week later, asking when he'd be back in the studio like he didn't realize Carl was grieving. Then there's Biggie, who, according to Diddy's ex-bodyguard Gene Deal, was planning to ditch Bad Boy for a better deal before things took a tragic turn. Now, Uncle Ron, another ex-bodyguard, claims Diddy planned to take Biggie out and even offered him money to do the hit. I was offered $30,000 to perform a hit on Biggie Smalls. March 1st of 1997, I was approached by Diddy to perform a hit on one of his artists. finding out that he wanted all the rights to all his catalogs.
I turned him down because I also found out that very night that Biggie had plans of leaving Bad Boy. Can't vouch for how much of this is legit, but it's some serious accusations against some powerful folks. And it's not just them. Other artists disappeared without a fuss. Mace became a preacher, Loon converted to Islam, and even Usher's got his own tale about what goes down working with Diddy. Some creepy stuff. Remember, before the Astro World tragedy, there was Diddy's event where nine kids died in a stampede. Supposedly, despite a hefty security presence, the crowd broke through, causing chaos. People helping Diddy with the event claim they found him counting cash in a back room after the kids were taken to the hospital. Diddy denies it, but multiple folks saw him doing it. And then there are stories of him and his crew allegedly chanting weird stuff during sit-downs. Like this person who said Puffy and his pals were chanting crazy stuff, and the room got colder by the minute. So yeah, maybe it was a blessing in disguise that Lil Jerome got the boot from Bad Boy Records. But this fallout with Jerome isn't untypical, and we've seen other artists get dropped or leave Bad Boy. A bunch of artists just ghosted without saying squat, and one of them was Mace. People were expecting big things from him, not just in R&B, but also in the broader rap scene. Then out of the blue, he drops the bomb that he's ditching the music game to become a pastor. Everyone's minds were blown, especially considering he was killing it on the charts from 96 to 99. In the hip hop world, beef between artists is as common as rhymes about life's wild side. You can't talk rap without diving into the epic feuds, and the Mace Diddy drama is no exception. These two legends have had their beef making headlines for a while. Back in the 90s, Mace was a big shot under Diddy's bad boy label, but things hit a snag in the early 2000s over business stuff. Even after Mace left bad boy, things were coolish until the 2020 Grammys, where Diddy got the Icon Award and used the stage to call out the Grammys for disrespecting black artists. Black music has never been respected by the Grammys to the point that it should be. So, so right now, this, this current se situation, it, it's not a revelation. This thing been going on. And it's not just going on in music, it's going on in film, it's going on in sports, it's going on around the world. And for years, we've allowed institutions that have never had our best interests at heart to judge us. And that stops right now. While many artists nodded along, Mace wasn't vibing with it. He took to Insta, in a since-deleted post, to call out Diddy for treating artists like dirt, especially him, who helped Diddy snag that Icon Award. Mace spilled the tea on Diddy holding on to his publishing from 24 years ago for a measly $20K. Yeah, not cool. Mace offered Diddy a cool $2 million in cash to buy back his publishing, and Diddy hit him with some shady conditions. Fast forward to 2022, and Mace dropped Oracle 2, The Liberation of Mace and Bitha, where he's not holding back. He throws shade at Diddy's latest name change, Brother Love, and takes more jabs about money, label issues, and how Diddy supposedly used Biggie's death for cash. The diss track, packed with more digs, is Mace's boldest move against Diddy yet. As of now, Diddy hasn't fired back with his own statement or track, but Mace had left Bad Boy and parted ways with Diddy, and it was kind of abrupt when it happened back in the day. Rumors started flying about why Mace left so suddenly, and fans and industry folks were all up in arms. How does a 19-year-old rapper wake up one day and decide, hey, I'm out gonna be a minister? In 99, Mace made a big announcement that he was cutting ties with Bad Boy Entertainment to start San Ministries, where San stands for saving a nation. He took on the title Minister Mace, saying he left to find God in his heart. When Mace was at the top of his game, thanks to the success of his album Harlem World, he spilled the beans to a radio interviewer, saying he felt like he had a lot of money, but didn't really know who he was. He knew he had to do something beyond hip hop. Jams, where we count down the liveest hip hop and R&B videos right here, Harlem Today's World. Today's show has Casey and JoJo Monica in a new video from Harlem World, Album which is in stores. the house representing the album stores now. So go pick it up, no problemo. We're gonna set it off with this first video. So y'all check it out, we're gonna be here holding it down with Harlem World. But here's the thing. People aren't entirely sure why Mace left. Diddy doesn't just let someone waltz out and claim they're done. 
He had Mace locked into a deal for a good chunk of time. The drama never chilled between them, especially when Mace started dissing Diddy. Even after Diddy gave a heartfelt Grammy speech about how hip hop and black music never get the respect they deserve, Mace wasn't feeling it. Now let's talk Faith Evans. She was big in the 90s, tied to Bad Boy from 94 to 04. After leaving, she went all entrepreneur, launching her record company called Prolific Musical Group, brought in the experts, did her thing, and dropped albums, like the impressive First Lady in 2005 that hit Hash 2 on the Billboard 200. Evans kept the hustle going, earning acclaim for multiple killer albums, including her latest one, Incomparable, released in 2014. She's been making waves in the game. In 2017, she got into promoting an album called The King and I, a collab project with Biggie. This album, packed with 25 tracks, tells the story of Faith and Biggie's lives, from the day they met to the heartbreaking moment Biggie passed away in 1997. After Biggie's passing, Faith Evans moved on and got into relationships, eventually settling down with Todd Russell. The two even have a couple of kids together. But you know, Marriage isn't always a smooth ride. They face challenges. And in August 2010, Faith Evans got into some legal trouble. She got nabbed for drunk driving. Things got real. And in 2011, Evans and Russaw decided to call it quits. Notably, the possession case against Faith got dropped when they both agreed to go through a 13-week treatment program. Life's got its twists and turns, right? Now let's dive into the shady side of things. Some fans and sources throw shade at Diddy claiming he was the puppet master behind Faith Evans, pulling the strings and getting her involved in some mysterious activities. It seems like folks picked up on a pattern, linking Diddy to controlling and engaging in questionable stuff with younger artists. When the heat turned up regarding Diddy's connection to Biggie's demise, Faith stepped up to defend him. She dropped a bomb saying, Puff would never have Big involved in that. According to her, their bond was one of a kind, and she never had such a close connection with the New York Big Shot as Biggie did. Faith shut down the idea that Diddy had any role in Biggie's tragedy. She made it clear that despite the theories and connections people were throwing around, there's no way anyone could piece together the mystery of Big's untimely end. She even went on to say, I know without a doubt that if that's the case, then we would have sued Puff a long time ago if we felt that way. Basically, Faith shut down suspicions and called out the attempts to drag Diddy into the legal mess. But hey, suspicions don't fade that easily. A bunch of musicians who once rolled with Diddy have accused him of leading them into some sketchy actions. The rapper Jaguar spilled the tea on an incident where someone walked in on Diddy, getting the new singer Christopher Williams to do some questionable stuff. Now let's dig into some wild stories involving Diddy and straight artists. Method Man found himself in a bizarre situation at a club in LA when Diddy, for some reason, decided to hit on him. Instead of keeping it chill and inviting Method Man over like a normal person, Diddy sent someone else to trick him into getting into a car. It's like a weird game for Diddy, putting these straight guys in awkward spots. And Method Man wasn't the only one. And this is like one of the only times Puff ever stopped to speak to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, back in them during days, those, yeah, yeah, during, those, during days. those days, you know, Big was still alive, right. whatever. As soon as I walked out the club, B, uh, Tracy Waples, she outside in a Benz, like, Map, come on, get in the car. I'm like, I'm not making a connection here. And I'm like, oh, that's a pump car. That's a pump car. I ain't no way I'm living that way. Another rapper, Exhibit, shared his horror story. Diddy invited him home for a good time and then took him clubbing. Turns out it wasn't your average club. It was an explicit gay club. Exhibit, just trying to have a good time, got the shock of his life when he realized what kind of club it was. Diddy had sneakily tricked him into the whole situation. Puffy, he took you to a club before, and you seen a whole lot of men kissing, <laughs> and you seen a whole lot of weird stuff going on. You know, you seen a whole lot of gay stuff going on. If you don't mind, man, what's the backstory behind that? <laughs> man, man. <laughs> Man, man, I ain't gonna touch that shit, man. Fuck. Let's dive into a little throwback Thursday drama that shook the blog world back in 2009. Internet blogs were on fire, gossip was flying, and everyone's favorite sites were just taking off. Rapper Zibit spilled some serious tea in an interview on Sirius Satellite's Foxhole Radio, and oh boy, did it blow up. So here's the scene. A New Year's party in Miami, Zibit, Kareem Superhead Steffens, and Diddy all hanging out. Puffy pulls Zibit aside and drops a bomb about Superhead. She'll videotape you with fingers in the booty. 
Zibit is like, what the heck are you talking about? When he confronts Superhead, she just laughs it off, saying she'll explain later, hinting at some mysterious past incident with Diddy. Fast forward to Diddy inviting Zibit and Superhead to a nightclub. They walk in, hit the VIP lounge, and things take a wild turn. Zibit describes seeing two dudes kissing and another guy butt naked dancing. He's shook and decides to bail without even telling Diddy. After the interview, Diddy reaches out the next morning and Zibit clarifies, I have no beef with Diddy. He explains that the statements were twisted by journalists and that Diddy called, mentioning the club was an after hours spot called Space, not exactly what Zibit had bargained for. Diddy's antics don't stop there. He's approached plenty of straight artists in the hip hop scene, including 50 Cent. Now, 50 Cent is known for being straightforward. So when Diddy made advances, 50 didn't hold back and spilled the whole incident to the media. It's a fruit Trust me. You see these little weird ass pictures and shit like that out there? I'm just sitting out there for no reason. You don't see accident pictures of me like kissing it. Like that doesn't happen by accident. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Later you're going to find out a little shit that I'll be saying. Not the shit that y'all saw. Worse. Way worse. Wow. Are you kidding me, yeah? Like penetration pictures and, and... Nah, come on, man. Come yeah. on, Fifth. <laughs> All that. And I didn't even... I didn't even... I called the nigga. I said, yo, you really... You fucking with this girl? Like, you really... Like, you like her? Like that? And he was like, yeah. That's, that's my girl. I'm like, all right. I'm going to send you something. You look at it. You call me back. Oh, I man. sent him the photos, the pictures and everything. And the nigga called back and was like, yo, thanks, man, about us tonight, y'all, I really appreciate that. Yo, where you get these shits from? <laughs> Diddy's known for showing his romantic interest by inviting dudes on shopping sprees. Yeah, shopping is his way of saying, hey, I'm into you. When he extended the offer to 50 Cent, it caught him off guard. But 50 was in a place in his career where he could shut down Diddy's bold moves. In the middle of the recent storm of accusations against Diddy, his old rival 50 Cent has jumped at the chance to publicly throw shade at him. This feud has brought up past discussions about the two rap giants, and internet sleuths dug up a 2010 radio interview with DJ Who Kid on Shade 45, where 50 Cent raises eyebrows about Diddy's relationship with Cassie, the person who later sued the bad boy executive, making serious allegations about his unacceptable behavior. In that interview, 50 Cent spills the beans that he got explicit pictures of Cassie on his phone from an unknown source. These pictures, way more explicit than what the public knew, led 50 Cent to hit up Diddy, asking questions about his connection with Cassie. Diddy admits they were romantically involved, and 50 Cent, concerned about the content he got, shows him the pictures. Diddy thanks him but also makes 50 Cent suspicious about where these explicit materials came from. Being skeptical, 50 Cent suggests that the disturbing pictures weren't a result of Cassie's actions, but were linked to Diddy. The identity of they in 50 Cent's story is unclear, but he implies some awareness within a certain circle. During the interview, 50 Cent doesn't hold back, calling Sean Combs a derogatory term and emphasizing that sharing the explicit images wasn't an act of goodwill. With the history of animosity between 50 Cent and Diddy, these revelations just add more spice to their already contentious relationship. With 50 Cent hinting at more bombshells to come, we're left wondering how this ongoing public showdown will play out in the eyes of Fifth. You know 50 Cent, he loves stirring the pot. The recent case with Cassie's accusations against the bad boy mogul added a serious twist to their ongoing feud. Even with a quick settlement, the G-Unit MC believes it's not the end of Diddy's public challenges. Taking to Instagram, he shared his thoughts on the situation, hinting at potential future revelations. LOL, he paid that money real quick, should have done that before the shark saw the blood in the water, and here they come in five, four, three, two, one, every woman he put his hand on. In a direct post, 50 Cent commented on a news story about Diddy's quick settlement, suggesting that the payment came too late and attracting attention like sharks smelling blood in the water. He predicts a countdown, expecting revelations from every woman Diddy has been involved with. This prediction got people talking, leading to a re-examination of confessions from Diddy's past partners and a closer look at his current social circle. Adding to the story, 50 Cent recalls a strange tale from an old interview 
where Diddy expressed a desire to take him shopping. The weirdness of this encounter raises questions about Diddy's intentions, prompting 50 Cent to issue a warning about Diddy's true character. So, whether it's Lil Jerome's disappearing act, Mace's unexpected career turn, or Faith Evans overcoming hurdles, the Bad Boy Records Chronicles are filled with highs, lows, and unexpected turns. It's a roller coaster ride in the world of music, and these artists have definitely left their mark on the industry. Now let's sprinkle in some speculation about the potential storm clouds gathering over Diddy's empire. With the recent controversies, one can't help but wonder if there's a storm brewing that might shake the very foundations of the bad boy kingdom. Could the whispers of Diddy's involvement in explicit activities and legal troubles lead to a downfall? The air is thick with uncertainties. 50 Cent's recent jabs and hints at more revelations have certainly added fuel to the fire. Imagine if the tide turns against Diddy and legal troubles escalate. It could be a rocky road ahead. Could Diddy's financial empire face a serious dent? If the allegations turn out to have substance, it might not only damage his reputation, but also impact his pockets. Lawsuits, settlements, and potential legal battles could be on the horizon. And we all know legal drama doesn't come cheap. And what about the whispers of federal investigators looking into Diddy's connections? If these investigations lead to concrete evidence, the consequences could be severe. The notion of Diddy facing legal consequences, be it fines or even jail time, is like a looming storm on the horizon. In the unpredictable world of fame and fortune, empires can rise and fall. Could we witness the unraveling of Diddy's legacy? Only time will tell. The hip-hop mogul might need more than just his charisma to weather this storm. Stay tuned and keep it rizzle as we keep an eye on the horizon for any signs of thunder and lightning in Diddy's empire.